Welcome back to Game Developer Unity. Your go-to channel for game development tips, tutorials, and challenges. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon for weekly content to boost your game dev journey. So, have you ever dreamed of creating your own video games but didn't know where to start? Well, you're in the right place. We have already created three games Pong and Tic Tac Toe and Brick Breaker you can check out those videos. Today, we are taking on a classic project, a memory matching card game, a simple but fun way to dive deeper into Unity game development. Let's get started. Step 1 is creating the project. Open Unity and create a new 2D project. Name it Memory Matching Card Game. Once your workspace is ready, we'll set up the canvas and panel, the foundation for our game layout. In the hierarchy, right-click and go to UI and select Canvas. This is where all your UI elements, like cards, game over level finish panel will go. Now, select the canvas and change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. This ensures your game adapts to different screen resolutions. Next, let's add a panel. Right click on the canvas, go to UI and select panel, and name it card holder. This panel will hold all our cards. You can set its color to anything you like. I'm going with black for a sleek look. To organize our cards neatly, we'll add a grid layout group to the panel. Select the panel and add the grid layout group component. Set the cell size to define the size of the cards. I've chosen 90 by 118.333, but feel free to customize it. Adjust the padding and spacing for a polished layout, padding 20 for left, right and bottom and 35 for the top. Spacing of 15 works well for me. Now let's move to the heart of the game, the cards. Select Canvas and right-click in the hierarchy and choose UI and select Image. Rename this image object to Card Prefab. Assign a sprite or color to represent the back of the card. Add a button component in the Card Prefab to make it interactive. Finally, let's attach a script to this prefab. Create a script named Card in your Scripts folder and attach it to the Card Prefab. I've already written the code for this, so let's break it down. This script is responsible for controlling the behavior of an individual card in the game. The primary functionalities include flipping the card, hiding the card, and notifying the game manager when a card has been flipped. The class uses Unity's UI system to manage card images and interactions. First we have public variables. First is integer variable card id. This is a unique identifier for each card in the game. It is used to differentiate each card and link it to its corresponding image from a set of card faces. Each card will have a different card ID for proper identification. Next is Game Manager. This is a reference to the Game Manager card class, which manages the game logic, such as tracking which cards have been flipped and checking for matches. This reference is essential for interacting with the broader game state. Next we have a bool variable named is flipped. A private boolean flag that tracks whether the card is flipped over or not. It ensures that the card's face up or face down state is correctly managed. Card image is the image component attached to the card game object in Unity. It's responsible for displaying either the front face of the card or the back face of the card, depending on whether it's flipped or not. Start method, which runs when the card is first initialized. The is flipped flag is set to false, meaning the card starts face down. The card image dot sprite is assigned the card back image from the game manager card dothi and stance dot card back. This ensures that when the game begins, all cards appear with their backs showing. The flip card method is called when the player clicks or interacts with the card to flip it. The method first checks two conditions to ensure the card can be flipped. The card must not already be flipped as determined by, is flipped. There must be no more than one card currently flipped. This is verified by checking if game manager.first card or game manager.second card is null. 
This prevents the player from flipping more than two cards at the same time. If both conditions are true, the card flips. The is flipped flag is set to true, indicating the card is now face up. The card image dot sprite is updated to the front face of the card, which is stored in the game manager dot card faces array. The correct face is accessed using the card's unique card ID as the index. The method then calls game manager dot card flipped this, notifying the game manager class that this particular card has been flipped. This allows the game manager to track flipped cards, check for matches, and handle the game state accordingly. The hide card method is used when the card needs to be hidden again, flipped back over. The is flipped flag is reset to false, which signifies that the card is face down. The card image dot sprite is set back to the card back image, returning the card to its original state. This script provides the core logic for an interactive card in a matching game. The card class tracks whether the card is flipped or not, updates its image accordingly, and communicates with the game manager card class to inform it of the current state of the card. By flipping and hiding cards in this manner, the game can check for matches and manage the flow of the game effectively. Let's go back to the Unity editor and select card prefab. In the button don't forget to set up the onclick event for the button component to trigger the flip card method. Click here on plus icon drag card prefab game object here and assign flip card method. We are done with card prefab, just drag and drop this card prefab game object into project tabs prefab folder to create a prefab. Delete card prefab game object from the hierarchy tab. Next, let's add a timer and a final UI. For the timer, create a text, text mesh pro object. Name it timer text, this will display the time remaining for the player. Position it in the top right corner. Click here on the rect transform then click alt and select top left. Style it with your preferred font and alignment. For the final UI, add an image to the canvas. Name it final UI and change color as you like I am change this color to black. For cover the screen, Click here on the Rect Transform click Alt from the keyboard and select Stretch. Inside this panel, add a text element. Named final text to display messages like, Level finished, or, Game over. Set this to position as you like. Style it with your preferred font and alignment. Finally, add a button to restart the game. Name it restart, style it, we will link it to a restart function in the game manager script. Also don't forget to change the text of button restart. Next let's create a game object and name it, Game Manager. Now, let's create the brain of our game, the Game Manager card script. Attach this Game Manager script to the Game Manager game object. I've already written the code for this, so let's break it down. This class handles the core logic for a card matching game, from card creation and shuffling to checking for matches and managing game over conditions. Let's break down each section of the code to understand its functionality. Let's a breakdown of the key variables. A static instance of the game manager class, ensuring that there's only one instance of the game manager and it's easily accessible from other scripts. Card prefab. A reference to the card prefab that will be instantiated for each card in the game. Card back. The image for the back of the card, which is shown when the card is face down. Card faces. An array of sprites that represent the front faces of the cards. These images are randomized and assigned to the cards. Cards. A list to hold all the instantiated cards in the game. Card IDs. A list to hold the card IDs, 
which are used for shuffling and matching cards. First card and second card. References to the two cards that are flipped over during the game, used to check if they match. Card holder. A reference to the UI container panel where the cards will be displayed. Final UI, final text and timer text. These are the references to UI elements for displaying the end of game message and the timer. Pairs matched and total pairs. Counters for the number of matched pairs and the total number of pairs in the game. Timer. A float variable to track the time left in the game. Is game over and is level finished? Flags to track if the game is over or if the level is finished. Max time. The maximum time allowed for the game. In the awake method, we set up the static instance of the game manager card to ensure we have easy access to it from other scripts. The start method is where the game setup begins. The cards and card IDs lists are initialized, and the counters for matched pairs and the timer are set. The create cards method is called to create the cards, and shuffle cards is called to shuffle the card IDs, ensuring a random order for the game. The final UI is initially hidden, and it will only be shown at the end of the game. The update method is called every frame. Timer countdown. If the game isn't over and the level isn't finished, the timer counts down by subtracting time dot delta time. The remaining time is displayed through update timer text. Game over check. If the timer reaches zero, the game ends by calling the game over method. The create cards method creates the cards by populating the card IDs list with pairs of card IDs, ensuring each card has a matching pair. Instantiating the cards from the prefab, assigning each card an ID from the shuffled list, and adding them to the cards list. The shuffle cards method uses the Fisher Yates shuffle algorithm to randomize the card IDs list. The algorithm swaps each card ID with another card ID at a random index, ensuring the cards are shuffled in a random order. After shuffling, each card's ID is updated with the new shuffled ID. The card flipped method is called when a card is flipped. If it's the first card being flipped, it's assigned to first card. If it's the second card, it's assigned to second card, and the game checks whether the two cards match by calling check match. The check match method compares the IDs of the two flipped cards. If the cards match, i.e., their IDs are the same, the pairs matched counter is incremented. The game then checks if all pairs have been matched. If so, it calls level finished to finish the level. If the cards do not match, the flip back cards, coroutine is started to flip them back after a short delay. The flip back cards, coroutine waits for one second before flipping the two cards back over. It calls the hide card method on both first card and second card to reset them to their face down state. Game over. If the timer runs out and the game is over, this method is called setting the is game over flag to true and triggering the final UI. Level finished. If all pairs are matched, this method is called setting the is level finished flag to true and displaying the final UI with the level completion message. The final panel method displays the final UI. If the level is finished, it shows the message level finished along with the time taken. If the game is over, it shows the message game over. Time's up. The restart game method resets the game state. It clears the cards and card IDs lists, resets the game variables, and recreates and shuffles the cards. The update timer text method updates the timer UI text, displaying the remaining time in seconds. To sum up, the game manager card class manages the entire flow of the card matching game. It creates, shuffles, and displays the cards. Tracks the player's progress by checking if two flipped cards match. Handles the game's timer, checking for game over or level completion conditions. Displays the final UI when the game ends or the level is finished. Now, we are done with the script. Let us assign all the objects.
Select Game Manager Game Object and assign all the things to the Game Manager script. First is the Card Prefab. Drag and drop the Card Prefab from the Project folder. Here Card Back, I have created a one image that will be the Card Back image at start. So let's drag it to here. Next is the Card Faces list. This is the list of card that we are going to match. I already have created these cards. Let's assign this in this list. Leave these two as it is. Next is the card holder. Assign it from the hierarchy. Assign final UI and final text and timer text. Set the time of your game according to complexity. Also select card holder and change start corner to middle center. Change constraint to fixed column count to 4. Now we are set to test it. Press the play button in Unity's toolbar. Your cards should be generated in the grid, shuffled, and be clickable to flip over. When two cards are flipped, the game manager card will check for matches and flip them back if they don't match. And that's it. You've just created a fully functional memory matching card game in Unity. Great job! If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to Game Developer Unity for more awesome tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding!